Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAdamation.com and welcome to another section of our Playwright course. And in this section, we are going to talk about Playwright with SpecFlow integration. So far in our Playwright with c .net, we have been talking about how we could able to write a simple Playwright test with .NET and also extend the capabilities of Playwright.NET, something like these, as we have seen all these days. But we have not really seen a way to really run the test in a PDD format, which is nothing but SpecFlow in .NET world. In order to do that, I'm not really going to use this particular project. Rather, I'm going to create a new project for SpecFlow itself so that you can have a complete hands-on working on the SpecFlow with Playwright on that particular project. So the way we are going to use the SpecFlow in Rider IDE or in Visual Studio is you need to install what is called as an extension of SpecFlow. The way you could do is just go to the JetBrine over here, go to the preferences and then search for uh, the plugins. And then if you search for SpecFlow over here, you will get SpecFlow something like this. And you will see that in the marketplace, you will get the SpecFlow for Rider. Similarly, if you are using Visual Studio, you can just get SpecFlow for Visual Studio 2022 in the extensions over there. That's it. That's how we could able to do it. So in order to get started with the SpecFlow itself in the Rider IDE, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go create a file new and you will see that you will get a new project template called a SpecFlow project. So this SpecFlow project template will help you create what is called as a SpecFlow code for the .NET world that do in the Rider IDE. So I'm going to use this particular project. I'm going to say Playwright SpecFlow Git and I'm just going to say SpecFlow Playwright and I'm going to choose the framework is .NET, the test framework is AnyUnit, whatever. And then I'm going to include the Fluent assertion and then I'm going to hit create to create the project. And I'm going to create it in a new window over here. That's how I could able to create a simple SpecFlow project template in Rider IDE. And now I can start writing the code in the SpecFlow. But first of all, we need to install the dependency. This is nothing but the Playwright dependencies over here. So let me go and search for Playwright. And you will see that we get the Microsoft.Playwright over here. So let me go and install that. And that's it. We have now the Playwright over here. So now we have to start creating the feature files and the step definition files. But you can see that by default, the template which is created by the SpecFlow has got a default feature file, a calculator.feature file, and there is a calculator.step definition file, and there is a hooks file, and there is a drivers file over here. And we are going to make use of most of these files in this particular section, and we'll see how we could able to leverage the power of Playwright in SpecFlow. Well, in order to get started with it, the first thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to write a scenario, which is going to be basically pretty much like the same login operation that we did before on the EA application, if you remember, which is this one, the one with the page object model code. So this is the same exact thing that we are going to be using over here to see how we could able to leverage the power. So in order to do it, the first thing is we need to create the scenario, which is going to represent what we are basically going to test. So the scenario is going to look something like this. We are going to create a EA app test, something like that. This is the feature name. And this is the scenario, which it says test login operation for the EA application. And it is the same pretty much the same kind of uh, scenario. It says given I navigate to the application and I click the login link and I enter the following login details like the username and password, then I should see the employee list. If you remember, this is the same exact code that we did over here, the page object model code. We navigated to the application. We then entered the username and password, something like this. Before that, we click the login link and then we verified if the employee deal exists or not. So that's what we did. That's exactly the same thing we have written at, as a scenario over here. Let me see, there is a spelling mistake there. And there is a screwy line coming up because it says that the step definitions are not implemented. We need to go ahead and implement that. So before we even do that, let's go and rename this particular uh, file name. So I'm going to say EA app test dot feature. And similarly, this is going to be refactor this rename EA app test steps dot CS. So that's going to be the class name. And we're going to rename this to EA app test steps. And we're going to also change the constructor over here, something like that. That's it. And because these step definitions are not required, because these are for the calculator template step definitions, I'm going to get rid of them. 
And over here, I'm going to start implementing all these particular step definition. Basically, in order to start implementing the step definitions, we are going to click this create steps over here. And you can see that it's going to bring you up which class file you're going to create the step definitions for, which is nothing but this particular step definition. So I'm going to say over here, the EA test steps. You see that the step definitions are created. It also created a table because it is going to be a table of username and password. And similarly, we need to create it for the other steps as well. So I'm going to do it same way for the rest of the steps. Most of the jobs are taken care of by the IDE. So we are just using that over here, literally. So now that we have the feature, we have the step definitions that we wanted to implement, and we have the specflow project. The next step is we are going to start writing the Playwright driver code so that we can use it within our feature files, like how we did in our Discord. That's something we are going to discuss in our next lecture.